How Renaissance Artists Were Trained Imagine stepping into the heart of a Renaissance workshop, where aspiring artists honed their skills and produced iconic masterpieces. But how did these iconic artists learn their craft? What kind of training turned them into legends? They were undoubtedly talented, but the Renaissance period was defined by an apprenticeship process that systematically churned out artists we admire today. Often, young apprentices entered workshops at a tender age, sometimes before they turned 10. Many of them were part of artistic lineages, frequently connected through familial or marital ties, ensuring a steady income when sons assumed their father's roles. Pursuing art as a career was often a result of it being a family trade, with talent occasionally taking a back seat. Overseeing the family and workshop was the master, possessing both artistic expertise and keen business acumen. As the apprentice and master worked together, the apprentice learned the craft and contributed to the creation of commissioned artwork. There was certainly no shortage of aspiring young artists prepared to dedicate their lives to the craft. Numerous workshops, each focusing on a specific facet of art, employed a significant number of individuals. In the late 1300s, out of approximately 25,000 residents in Siena, 30 were painters, and 62 were stone masons. By the early 14th century, there were nearly 100 painters. Today, we view fine art as a luxury, something accessible to those with money and connections. But back then, art was something society desired, required, and utilized. And therein came the role of the apprentice. If you have enjoyed the video so far, we would really appreciate it if you would subscribe to our channel. Let's know if you want more videos like this by hitting the like button now and going back to the video. An apprenticeship could last anywhere from a few months to several years, with each experience tailored to the ever-changing art market. As an apprentice or garzon, you would become an integral part of the master's household, sharing accommodation and meals with the master's family. Apprentices started with simpler tasks, like preparing panels and grinding pigments. They made their materials from scratch, including paint colors and brushes. During this time, they would learn to draw by copying their master's drawings or those of other artists. To further their visual education, apprentices would study and copy renowned works in their city. Michelangelo, for instance, replicated Giotto's paintings during his training years. Apprentices would then progress to drawing from statuettes or casts, primarily using ancient sculptures to help bring naturalism to Renaissance depictions of the human form. In the end, it was through these hands-on experiences, relentless practice, and unwavering dedication that apprentices became masters, etching their names into history and leaving us with the timeless masterpieces of the Renaissance. So, the next time you gaze upon a masterpiece from the Renaissance, remember the journey it took to create it, a journey that transformed apprentices into legends of art.